The Unit Circle, Part 1 You should be familiar with the measurement of angles and the Cartesian coordinate system, including the naming of the four quadrants. In this lesson, we'll give a trigonometric definition of the functions sine and cosine and find some values of these functions. You may be familiar with the geometric definition of sine and cosine, but the intent of this lecture is to give an alternate definition called the trigonometric definition. We begin with a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. We will measure angles whose vertex is at the origin, one side is on the positive side of the x-axis, and for small angles whose measure is positive but less than 90 degrees, the other side will be in the first quadrant. The black side will stay fixed, and we will move the red side to get various angles. We can then associate a point, that is, an ordered pair, to each angle. What we have just described is a function. The input of the function is the angle, in this case 60 degrees, and the output of the function is an ordered pair, which specifies the location of a point. In this case, the point appears to have an x-coordinate of 0.5, and a y-coordinate between point 8 and point 9. As the angle changes, so will the point. Unlike the geometric definition, which is valid only for angles between 0 and 90 degrees, there is no need to restrict ourselves to the first quadrant. For instance, the angle can be in the second quadrant. We can have a straight angle that measures 180 degrees, or the angle can be even bigger than 180 degrees. Just as a skateboarder can do a 360, we can likewise make a full trip around the circle to arrive at the angle 360 degrees. Returning to our function, let's take, for example, the angle 90 degrees, which will have its variable red side pointed straight up the y-axis. This angle is associated with the point 0, 1. Our function has an input angle of 90 degrees and has as its output the ordered pair 0, 1. The straight angle of 180 degrees will be associated with the point negative 1, 0. So our function has an input angle of 180 degrees and an output ordered pair of negative 1, 0. If the input is the angle 360 degrees, the output is 1, 0. As a test of your understanding, find the point associated with the angle 270 degrees. If the input is the angle 270 degrees, the output is the ordered pair 0, negative 1. We can also have the angle equal 0. In this case, the point will be 1, 0. We can also have the angle go clockwise from the x-axis rather than counterclockwise. In this case, the angle will be measured as a negative angle. For example, the angle negative 90 degrees corresponds to the point 0, negative 1. To recap, we have developed a function which has as its input an angle, and the output of the function is a point, that is, an ordered pair on the unit circle. We are now ready to define the cosine function and the sine function. The cosine function is merely the x-coordinate of the ordered pair of our previous function, and the sine is the y-coordinate of our previous function. For example, for the angle 180 degrees, the point on the unit circle is negative 1, 0. Therefore, the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, since the x-coordinate of the point is negative 1, and the sine of 180 degrees is 0, since the y-coordinate of the point is 0. To test your understanding, try the following problems. You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to work out the answers to these problems. To recap, the angle 0 degrees is associated with the positive side of the x-axis and therefore the point 1, 0. Angles are then measured counterclockwise from the positive side of the x-axis. The cosine of an angle is the x-coordinate of the associated point and the sine of an angle is the y-coordinate of the associated point.